One of the very first things that players want to learn when it comes to improving is how to get the 10 CS per minute like all the professional players do. But if you pay attention, those same players are not only farming like crazy, but they manage to have a ton of pressure on the map at the same time. We're constantly talking about how to maximize your farm as an ADC, but for this guide, we're gonna go over how to appropriately balance your time in game between selfishly farming to scale and grouping with your team to make plays happen. But before getting into things, here's our quick question of the day. This time, we're just interested to hear with what you're struggling with as an ADC. We'd love to know what you personally find difficult when it comes to climbing so that we can make better content to help you out. So just let us know if there's a type of guide you'd like to see in the future. Alright, as one of our ADC viewers, you're probably aware of all the concepts we constantly go over to maximize your farm, such as learning when and how to farm side lanes in solo queue, knowing when to take your jungler's camps, etc. Those kinds of tactics are great for learning how to CS more and more, but something we don't discuss enough is learning how to balance all of that while also having a ton of presence on the map. More importantly, how that balance changes based on your own playstyle, elo, and even region. For example, here's two of the ADCs we usually try to teach from when we're talking about maximizing your farm every game. Here's one of Def's accounts. Take a look at his CS averages. Most of them are around 8 to 8.5. Next, let's look at one of Reckless's accounts. His CS averages are all above 9 with some even going above 10, which is what we'd obviously consider the ideal. We're not about to use that information to say that Reckless is somehow better than Def or the other way around, but that their priorities in their games are probably completely different based on different factors. 10 CS per minute on average is something extremely rare to have in solo queue. Very few players get it, and a big reason for that is that most players have different values when it comes to either pressuring the map or scavenging for farm. What will make you a better player is learning how to balance farm and map pressure based on the specific game circumstances that you're facing. Before getting into how to balance those things though, let's first take a look at what an ideal situation would be in your games. For that, let's quickly watch one of Def's replays to show you what we mean. During this game, Def had a lot of opportunities to go for a place where there were conveniently large sources of farm. For example, as he's invading the enemy jungle, he can take both raptors and red buff while waiting for the enemy Diana to show up. See what we mean? He has both pressured the map and kept his CS numbers up at the same time. Right after that, Def cancels Samira's base with his ult and helps score yet another kill. Not only that, but there's a source of farm for him to get right after as well. These are some simple examples of ideal choices you want to try to make in your games. You will want to gravitate towards plays like these that give you the best of both worlds. In fact, this game was so perfect in that regard that Def went on to have nearly a kill per minute along with around a 12 CS per minute average. This was an absurd game that is nearly impossible to pull off, but he kept finding perfect situations like the ones we saw before where he never had to make a choice between map pressure and farming. As a quick reminder before moving forward, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out our hyper improvement system at skillcaps.com. We have professional courses by top players, smurf commentaries where a challenger player walks you through how to climb out of every rank from iron to diamond, and we upload tons of new exclusive guides to our website each week. In fact, we're so confident you'll improve using our system that if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using skill caps, you can claim a full refund, so there's no risk. What are you waiting for? Check out skillcaps.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Okay, so we know what an ideal macro situation looks like. What's next is learning how good players adapt when they don't have such easy choices to make. Our goal here is to help you see when it's appropriate to focus more on farm and when you should probably stop to help your team in some way around the map. Let's start things off with another one of Def's replays. After pushing the bot lane wave into the tower, Def rotates towards middle. This is where he made a balancing choice between farming and map pressure. We'll come back to this moment in a bit. By drawing lead to the bottom with his push, Def hopes to get a numbers advantage fight in mid lane to go his team's way. Sadly, his team was very far behind and they barely managed to trade one for one, but when you're playing to catch up, going even with your opponent can definitely be seen as a win. Okay, so going back to our decision moment that we mentioned, Def had another option here. He could have very easily gone to Grom, then Wolves, and by then, Lee Sin probably would have pushed the wave back into him. He could just rotate back to the bottom to keep farming. That would have been a good option to maximize his CS. But the decision Def made was based on the specific game that he's in. Look at the scoreboard, it's 33 kills already at 15 minutes. There's a ton of aggressive champions with CC on his team and he's playing in Korean solo queue. This region is known for going really aggressive and making non-stop plays to end games fast. In this situation, it's completely fine to sacrifice a bit of farm for the chance of making a play with his team, even if it's not guaranteed. Let's compare the decision Def made to the typical type of grouping we see from ADCs in low elo. 
As this Misfortune's team summons the Rift Herald, she decides to tag along with them to take the mid lane tower. We're obviously reviewing this since this was a terrible choice. As she pushes, she gets caught out by Mordekaiser and dies a slow and painful deserved death. Keep in mind that even if she and her team had claimed the tower without dying, we would still be critiquing this play. The problem is how so many ADCs get baited by their team's bad macro instead of choosing to optimize their farm. Take a look at the start of this clip once again. Misfortune's team has no business pushing mid because their Gwen is taking the top lane tower for free. Pushing with Rift Herald and mid is literally giving their opponents a numbers advantage willingly. Meanwhile in the bot lane, there's a big wave building that Misfortune could've gone to farm while also being in close proximity to the spawning Grom, Scuttlecrab, and Dragon giving her plenty of access to both farm and map pressure on objectives. Hopefully, you see the difference between Def's grouping and this Misfortune's grouping. Def teamed up with his team for a genuine reason that gave them an advantage, whereas MF was grouping just for the sake of grouping. That's not a balance between pressure and farm. That's just a bad play. Low elo ADCs definitely overgroup, but once they learn to start farming side lanes, they can also take that to too much of an extreme as well. Like before, let's check a replay of farming done right and compare it to a low elo example. Here we have Reckless playing Zaya and spawning from his base. Like before with the death example, Reckless makes a balancing decision here. We'll come back to it afterwards. What he chooses to do is to focus farm on himself. His jungle Morgana is bot side, therefore he just takes all of her top side camps. Then he passes towards top, gets a bunch of waves, gets a tower, and even takes the enemy Krugs after that as well for an insane spike in gold. That was a beautiful macro. That's exactly what we're talking about when we say that ADCs need to learn when and how to side lane. But let's bring things back to the origin of that decision. After doing Wolves, Reckless had a choice to go middle here. It's not wrong to let his Lee Sin be the one to go top, which is the correct lane assignment. That way, Reckless can be mid, push waves, and potentially score vision control around Baron River with his support. If he'd done that, then maybe this weird Baron fight that occurred after he pushed top wouldn't have happened. This was only a result from the fact that his team had to concede vision in the river from him going top. Had his team had river control from his mid lane priority, they would have never been there sneaking Baron in the first place. Okay, so just like Def's decision, let's make the point here clear. Reckless had two options, to get solo farm or get correct lane assignments and control of the mid lane area. Both are reasonable plays, but based on a specific game, Reckless prioritized farm over immediate map pressure. It's not like the enemy team had a good Baron comp anyways. Not only that, but Reckless as a player tends to gravitate towards power farming and scaling as fast as possible. There's nothing wrong with that as long as the decisions you're making are solid. Trading a bit of map control for the huge source of farm he acquired was definitely fine in our books. Just like before, let's show you an example of a player prioritizing farm over pressure poorly. During this Platinum ELO game, the Jin player was under quite a bit of stress. As you can tell from the scoreboard up top, this game is quite bloody and for good reason. The enemy team has both a Katarina and a Nocturne, resulting in a very chaotic game. Jin has had to play very carefully throughout most of it to remain alive. After clearing some minions in mid, Jin recalls for items and has a choice to make. His Zed is mid, so he can either go mid and share farm or go bottom and acquire that wave that's coming in. Based on what you've seen, what do you think you'd do? If you watch a lot of our guides, you may immediately be tempted to say that Jin should go bottom to not share gold. Good idea, but not here. Remember this moment during our Reckless example? Do you notice something? Reckless is either even or only one level behind the enemy solo laners. This is usually what we recommend in our guides before you can solo lane aggressively. If you can't go toe to toe with the enemy solo laners, of course side laning will never work out for you. This is a huge problem that low elo ADCs have. We showed you this earlier moment to highlight how Jin is down two levels to the enemy assassins and has burned his summoner spells. So when Jin decides to path bottom for solo gold, he can only farm this one wave and then he has nothing else here to farm. There's no jungle camps nearby and he can't push any further without risking his life. Which means that he just sacrificed grouping time with his team for a meaningless amount of farm. And remember, this Jin should definitely know that the pace of the game is quite chaotic due to the enemy composition. A fight immediately broke out in mid lane which his team ended up losing due to his absence. Jin rotates over but his entire team is dead by this point. He has no one to peel him so he just ends up dying for no reason as well. To wrap things up, let's just break all these replays down again really quickly to make everything crystal clear. In our example from Deft, he opted to give up a mediocre source of farm for a good source of pressure with a numbers advantage in mid. In Reckless's game, he chose to give up some mid lane control for a ridiculous amount of farm on the top side of the map. In Misfortune's case, she gave up a relatively decent amount of farm bot side to follow her team's stupid Rift Herald play. 
Lastly, in this final Jin example, Jin gave up grouping with his team and countering the enemy assassin comp for a single wave and bot. It's pretty easy to see the difference. The expert ADCs are trying to make the best choices possible based on the specific games that they're in. Sometimes farm is the correct choice and sometimes pressure is. It's on you to figure out what's more important in your own games. What you need to desperately avoid is choosing something without considering the other option. Blindly grouping all the time or blindly farming all the time isn't going to make you good. It's the balance between both options which will not only help you achieve higher CS numbers but also have more map pressure than ever before. Alright guys, that's gonna wrap up this guide. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcaps.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. As always, thanks for watching, and see ya!